Welcome to Evolution of the Golf Swing, part six. Now in the previous five parts of the evolution, we started with the shepherd hitting pebbles on the beach of Musaba in the 1300s. And we've talked about how the swing has developed physically and biomechanically, and how the equipment has developed and evolved. But let's just wind back a little bit and look at that caddy. I think I called him Alexander Galloway of the Hay Clan, a native of Musselburgh. He started hitting the golf ball or the, ball, the pebble with, with his crook, only using one hand. He then used two hands, and then he realized that body rotation created power. So what I want to talk to you about in this session is just how, quite naturally, the swing evolves in sequence. I can't start the golf swing with my wrists. They would vote for upright. Nor could I vote for a forearm rotation, because my swing would be flat. The beauty about shoulder turn, it's the igniter of the swing. So even back in the 1300s of the young Alexander Galloway Hay on the beach of Musselburgh, he had the ability to turn his shoulder through about 90 degrees. Even when you inclined forward, you were able to turn the body. There is that rotational motion that would help me beat a carpet or swing a baseball bat or use an ax. This rotational movement is key. Now, the power of the swing is built up. We had some power from the hands and the arms, but the shoulder can turn. It's a quarter turn, half a turn, three quarter and full turn. You can see that power comes from that. So the swing evolves. I'm just going to now hit four, four shots with the quarter, half, three quarter and full shoulder turn. Okay, this is a six iron. The grip and posture as before. I'm going to utilize a quarter swing. There's the classic chip and run. I'm now going to use half a shoulder turn. That becomes a big chip and run or a low shot from under trees. If I go to a three quarter shoulder turn, I get a nice shot into the wind if I'm playing by the seaside. And the most powerful shoulder turn is the full 90 degrees. Turn the shoulders fully and then I go to full power. So there we have it, an evolution of power. Quarter throttle, half throttle, three quarter full throttle. Now, if you take this club, it's already given you a vocabulary of four individual little shots. And as you practice your game, you just learn to regulate the swing in different amounts. So if you want a little chip and run, you might only go to here. However, a low shot under the wind, you might require a fairly full turn. But what we can see, there's a natural sequence. You have to start the swing by utilizing the shoulders. The left shoulder particularly starts the movement. There's grip and posture, wrists are upright, forearms are flat. The shoulder turn knows where your plane is and your swing path. Now just use the word plane. What does plane mean? Here's me swinging the club in a horizontal plane. This is me swinging the club in a vertical plane. But we play somewhere between the two in golf on what's called an inclined plane. The plane of the club changes with, the plane of the swing changes with the length of the club. But if I go down the line for you, there's quarter shoulder, half shoulder, three quarter shoulder, full shoulder. I show you from the front, quarter shoulder, half shoulder, three quarter and full. So there is the evolution of the swing and it takes us to the halfway point. So, once you've held the club properly with good posture, make no mistake, the shoulders are the father of your backswing.